take a look at a secret world chess championship before Wilhelm Steinitz was the first official world champion, before even Paul Morphy was the first unofficial world champion. There was a Labordene in 1834. He played a match, an unofficial, unofficial world championship against McDonald. This was about as secret, as unofficial, as exclusive, and as casual as a world chess championship could possibly be. But make no mistake, these two players really took this seriously. So serious, in fact, that this world championship was decided not through a match that took place over a series of games, but it was decided through a series of matches that took place over a series of games. 85 games in total was played to determine finally that La Bordenay was the strongest chess player in the world. And this is the most famous game of that match, particularly because it has the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful end position. And no, it's not even the one from the thumbnail, even though that is also pretty wild. So let's get into the game. We have McDonald with the white pieces almost 200 years ago in 1834 sitting down at a real chessboard, much like this one, and playing pawn to e4, much like I would do or you would do today. c5, the Sicilian defense by Le Bordenay. Knight to f3, knight to c6. And it is here that I have made a video about the Magnus Carlsen gambit, where you can play b4. This is some 170 years before Magnus was even born, though, so they did not play that. Instead, MacDonald played the open Sicilian with pawn to d4. Pawn takes pawn, and knight takes pawn. And here I have a challenge for myself. I am going to try to make this next bit the most tinkly, most relaxing, most tinkle, 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 tinkly sponsor integration that you have ever heard. Because this video contains a lot of brilliant moves. And therefore, it is fitting that it is sponsored by Brilliant. Brilliant offers a soothing learning experience. The beautifully designed courses can fit right into your ASMR relaxation routine. Put on some tingly 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 sounds in the background and kick back on the Brilliant website. Relax and get smarter. It doesn't get any better than that. You will develop new skills at your own pace while enjoying a calming and mindful experience. It can help your chess as well. I recommend starting with the courses on logic and scientific thinking as these skills are crucial for chess. Logic is a search for elegant solutions to sometimes complex problems. The better you get at this, the better you get at filtering out the noise in chess and getting to the truth of the position. Critical thinking skills are what you use to analyze your own chess so you don't keep making the same mistakes over and over. I personally use Brilliant a lot and I highly recommend it. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days. Visit brilliant.org slash ASMR chess or click the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual 
premium subscription. Thank you. Now, Le Bourdonnais thinks, that night, am I going to tolerate that? Nah, I'm going to play pawn to e5, attacking the knight. And somebody like Karpov in the 1970s would probably have played knight to b4 here, targeting the now weaker d6 square backed up by the queen hoping to exchange this knight for this very important dark squared bishop. However, MacDonald did not play like Karpov. He played like MacDonald and he played knight takes knight. Like so. And then we see b takes c6. Like so. This video is a little bit uh, different from most of my videos on historical games. Why, 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 why? Because I wanted to share with you my experience of getting into a famous historical game. So I have not studied this game extensively. I have not analyzed it. I have not memorized it. So instead, I have my trusty computer here by my side, where I have all the moves uh, from the game. And then you will see me, I will invite you on my journey, experiencing this gem of a chess game from almost 200 years ago. So bishop to c5. Excuse me, bishop to c4. Targeting f7. I would say um, this move does make a lot of sense. You want to get the bishop out so you can castle. I could be afraid um, that this bishop would be targeted uh, because if black will be able to play pawn to d5, right now uh, we have three defenders on d5, so we can't play it now. But if we get that in successfully, be a big problem for white. The next move is knight to f6. Actually looking a little bit at the d5 square. So now we may be able to play this. Also, we are attacking e4. So therefore, bishop to d5, pinning the knight. So the knight now can't move because we lose the queen. So what, what will we do about that as black? I think it's interesting that we see both bishop developed uh, so early by white. Uh, I think this um, is um, a result of when this game was played because today we will favor putting the knights out um, before we put the bishop out if we don't have a good reason to put the bishop out or to favor the bishop and you can see that this bishop move that um, pins this knight um, is about d5 and e4 and had we played knight to c3 instead we would also defend d5 and e4. I have not analyzed this position, but I feel that knight c3 is probably the stronger move. Le Bourdonnais breaks the pin. So now we have reignited the threat of d5, potentially, although white may choose to just capture this knight. They don't do that right away though. They play queen to e2. It's a curious, curious move as it takes away a defender of d5. It does defend e4, um, but it may be a little early to, to 
get the queen involved here also because she is not on this square she is already doing quite a bit she is already looking at this semi-open file so this move feels to me as something i should investigate or on a second playthrough of this to see if i can find find out if my intuition is correct and and there really is something wrong with this or if there is a deeper reason that McDonald played it. Here, Labordini played d5. So this looks very impressive uh, for Black's uh, side, I must say. Is White maybe hoping to actually target e5 after something like e takes, and then the queen would have a view of, of e5? But it does seem it does seem quite dangerous to allow this very impressive, impressive uh, pawn chain, pawn chain, pawn chain, pawn chain in the center of the board, almost without a fight. Actually, has Black been able to establish this? So McDonald starts ply, playing bishop takes knight, voluntarily giving up what we call the bishop pair. Now bishop takes bishop. That means that this dark squared bishop doesn't have a counterpart on the white side, meaning that black's overall control of the 32 dark squares, squares on the chessboard has now been increased a little bit. And the bishop, of course, defends e5, so there is no pawn takes, pawn takes, queen takes, check, and then saving the bishop. So right away, McDonald has to play bishop to b3 to save the bishop. And although white's position is not, it's not hopeless, it's not lost, it may not even be that bad just visually and intuitively for me as a chess player, it looks like black has um, come out of this opening with a significant edge, establishing this control with the pawns here. And now Labordany castles. That's a good idea, McDonald says, and castles as well. So before I look at the computer what the next move is, I'll see if I can figure out what I would play in this position. I would consider a move like d4. I don't feel it's right to play right now. Um, it makes this bishop stronger um, and, and there is no urgency to play this. And it may be able to be undermined with a move like c3, but that is something I would definitely analyze. I would consider a move like bishop here to e6. That looks okay, but it doesn't seem to do that much. Then of course rook b8 with ideas maybe of rook b4, targeting the e4 pawn. Pawn to a4 could also be interesting, because if we get to play pawn to, pawn to a5, if we get to play to pawn to a4, this bishop would be trapped. We would win the bishop. So here we probably see something like c3. I don't know if it's a big deal. Or I would play rook to e8, um, simply, simply putting this rook opposite this queen and b, and then I would be looking to open up this file here. So let's see what the next sequence of moves is. Okay, I'm happy it's it's a move that I did analyze. Well, I didn't I didn't analyze it, but I did uh, I did look at it. It's pawn to a five looking to uh, looking to trap the bishop 
and here McDonald plays E takes D. Actually, I should make this sound here because like that is like my favorite thing. Oh, not really my favorite thing about doing these YouTube videos. My favorite thing about that is re reading the comments because for some reason I have been blessed with the most wholesome community in the world, which for which I'm extremely happy. But maybe my second most favorite thing is that I get to make those this capture sound. Uh, this one. Uh, on an almost daily basis. I love that sound. So that was... Uh, so we saw uh, E takes D and then C takes D. And now how are we saving... How are we saving the bishop from this thread here? Maybe playing C3 or this one was McDonald's choice so that rook D1 so that we after A4 we can just play bishop takes. Okay, I'll see if I can look at a sequence of moves here. Now a move that I'm a little bit puzzled by pawn to d4. What is, is that necessary right now? Why, why are we playing d4 here? I'm even more puzzled by this c4 response by, response, response, response by McDonald. Uh, of course, they say Ang Pasang is forced, um, but uh, capturing Ang Pasang here would hang the queen. So, and also maybe that meme wasn't as popular in the Café de la Réchance in 1834. Who knows? Um, so we do gain more space with this D4 move. But white has been allowed to establish some control over the center with this pawn here, exploiting the pin on this pawn from this rook to this queen. The queen goes to b6. And we've seen, this is interesting, I didn't actually notice this when I looked at the move bishop c2. And we should note that there is no queen takes here because bishop takes on h7, check, and then a discovered attack from the queen to the other queen, so we would lose our queen. So that's the tactical justification for this bishop here. And maybe what white is trying to do here is contain these two very strong pawns and and get the attack in on this side of the board instead of uh, this side of the board. Um, there is this maxim in chess that you should attack um, in the direction your pawns are pointing. So in this case the pawns are pointing this way, so black should attack over here and then maybe white feels that okay I should then move my attack over here to the other side while black is distracted on the queen side, maybe. Let's find a couple more moves. Bishop b7, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it looks at this square here, that is sort of protected by this pawn here. And um, of course we are looking towards the king and this bishop is on the long diagonal, that makes a lot of sense. Now knight d2. This also makes a lot of sense. We are in activating some pieces here from both sides. This knight can they go to f3, could even go but while being very well protected to e4. Rook on a to e8, knight to e4, attacking this bishop. We don't want to 
lose this bishop we are very happy as black that we have this uh, improved control over the dark squares so we play bishop back to d8 and now as white what will we do maybe maybe something amb ambitious like queen queen h5 looking at h7 or knight g5 these ideas looking at at h7 maybe maybe just b3 although although this dark square now looks very very weird uh, weird and weak um, and probably I don't have to defend still don't have to defend the B pawn because even if it was black to move and be captured here we have check takes and then the same discovered check so we will lose two pieces um, but um, we would still get the queen worth worth nine points um, in strength as opposed to the uh, six points we would have lost two times three for the pieces so what is the move uh, this I like c5 I didn't even consider that but that is a significant um, advantage of having this knight here and now we are getting this pawn to be a little stronger queen c6 now of course we don't want to move the knight so we get checkmated and we just see f3 there just saying I don't, I don't want this checkmate threat to go anywhere I don't want to be checkmated like that also I want to uh, solidify this knight very much on this outpost and try to contain these two dangerous pawns here now bishop d7 attacks the pawn so rook c1 now i would guess that we can't capture this pawn bishop takes knight takes queen takes and then just a discovered attack the bishop takes he's really banking on this bishop takes h7 um a lot but it does work out for for mcdonald here so okay um but f5 here looks very 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 good for black we are reinforcing our troops here at the front line um, and we are chasing away this uh, very important outpost that is trying to hold the line and the knight can't go here because g5 is protected um, you could try to go here maybe but i think just bishop takes pawn takes queen takes you lose a pawn so where do you want to go i guess actually you want to go here um to g3 no we see a queen check first not sure what it achieves of course the king just moves i guess yes the king does just move okay what it achieves is it allows mcdonald to play bishop a4 i missed that i missed that that was so in order to play f4 which allowed this check labordene had to evaluate that you white could play this check forcing king h8 then follow up with bishop to a4 now protected by the queen so the queen will have to move and then we will win the what is called the exchange white will win the exchange so the bishop will take the rook the rook will take the bishop 
white will have lost only a bishop black will have lost a rook which is a stronger piece you can think of think of it like this that they are virtually identical in that they can move as long as they want in four directions but since the bishop moves diagonally it cannot escape its color complex and therefore um, it is limited to half of the board whereas the rook of course is not limited it can go all over the board okay the queen will have to move knowing myself i would probably play queen g6 just looking at some attack if i was afraid of anything i, I could consider actually just uh, offering a queen exchange but i would be very unhappy to be down in material uh, with the queens off because my attacking chances would be lessened okay we see not queen g6 but queen h6 still uh, transferring the queen to a potential attack against the king but this is of course slightly better because it allows us access on the dark squares and here is a tactical sequence so bishop takes rook but not rook takes bishop so now we are going to win the exchange for sure but black plays pawn takes knight like so and now what do we do as white what do we do like we could try to just save the bishop just take the bishop back that looks dangerous because then pawn takes pawn here this rook looks like it could become very very dangerous very soon so will we see pawn takes pawn that also looks like just bishop takes pawn is going to be trouble 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 for white um, so what does white play oh wow pawn two that's nice pawn two c6 defending or potentially defending the bishop because now the bishop would be able to come out here and we are attacking this dark squared uh, light squared bishop on b7 and we are making this diagonal towards the king less less dangerous and uh, if rook takes bishop here just pawn takes bishop we would be up material as white so what Ooh, spicy pawn takes pawn on f3 spicy actually allowing this to escape or allowing this to fall but saying these pawns are a menace these front soldiers are going to spell trouble for white and it does look does look like black with even with being temporarily at least down material like these pawns are very good this queen can come in here with a check this rook will be very good very soon like if we capture here for instance it will have access very close to the king to the king to the king to his majesty so the move played is rook c2 so not pawn takes bishop but trying to defend against f2 check we could be able to capture that um, so if i was black here i wouldn't i wouldn't you know spend time um, trying to save this bishop i wouldn't spend time trying to attack this uh, capture this bishop i would really try to make this attack work and i think queen d6 queen e6 check very 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 good because king can't go here we would capture here with double check and i'm sure that i'm sure that we would win that the king probably also can't go here we would capture here with check so i guess the only move would be this and then maybe pawn takes pawn the rook is pinned and then this other rook would be attacking here so feels like that is something we should be looking at oh it's the it's what they 
it, it, it's the correct move. Or I don't know if it's the correct move, but it is what Labordene played. He did play queen e6 check. So let's see the sequence. Ah, the king moved here. I thought you couldn't really do that. I thought pawn takes pawn, but maybe just rook takes pawn. Sort of holds for white. Let's see. Okay, now bishop c8, trying to save the bishop. I think if white can get out of this attack with these very strong pawns, which I know that he can't because I have seen the end position, <laughs> by the way. Uh, but uh, if there was a way to get out of the attack, you know, to not make these the strongest pawns in the world, which they look to be right now, they look to be like the strongest pawns ever, um, then, uh, then it looks very good for white. But of course we have this issues of these pawns. So, so what do we do here? Oh wow, that's quite interesting. F2, pawn to F2. Now this pawn is now very, 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 very strong. The queening square, if we get here we make a new queen, but we do have uh, a rook to take care of and a queen that they're both defending this. We have the rook backing up the pawn, Okay, let's, wow. The rook goes to f1 in order to free up the queen um, from defending this, but now further pawn push, pawn to uh, d6, attacking the rook. The rook goes to c3, pinning the pawn to the queen. And are we then going to see maybe maybe e4, pawn to e4. No, we are first seeing the exchange of bishop. Bishop takes bishop. We don't want to be distracted by this. Pawn takes bishop. Now this pawn is quite well controlled, it looks like. We have the bishop, we have the rook. Um, but, um, yeah, and now pawn to e4. So these pawns are yeah, if, if you are an improving chess player and you want to understand the power of pawns, just look at what black is doing here. How amazing these pawns are, like how ev they work together, they march over the board, and the closer they get to the opponent's king and to the queening square, the stronger they become. So they start out... Uh, with a quite low value, and now they have very high value. It's a positional principle here. That's a little flashy move. Queen c8. Of course, we are not going to capture that. We would lose our rook to pawn takes rook and make a new queen. Actually, that would end in checkmate. So we are absolutely not um, capturing that. <laughs> but playing now that's a that's a nice move. Um, bishop, uh, bishop back to d8. I don't think that white has time to play queen takes bishop, rook takes bishop, rook to, rook to c8. Or, or, no, there can't be time for that. Let's take a look. Queen takes, rook takes, and, and the point here is that we are threatening checkmate but we could just defend the rook with the queen. So there is, so it doesn't work. So this is the position, okay. Queen changes its mind. Oh, the rook is here. And goes to c4. It looks very tough. It looks like Black can try something like the same kind of tactic with queen e1. Actually, that's what they play. Look at me, look at me. Um, it feels good. I mean, I'm not going to pretend that I can play just like Labordene, but uh, like for now, two moves, I guess. <laughs> 
that's something and now we are approaching this crazy crazy position so we are of course threatening checkmate capturing the rook we can't capture the queen because we make a rook or a new queen and um, that would be checkmate to the, for the king so we defend the rook with rook c1 also attacking the queen the queen is now protected <laughs> and now we're getting into this really insane insane an insanely beautiful uh, position so we defend the queen by p pushing the pawn to e2 also attacking the rook so the rook which can, can't capture the queen you have two rooks both attacking the queen none of them can capture because we would make a new queen and we white would lose so therefore rook to e1 oh actually not rook e1 i thought that was an automatic move but there is a uh, a nice little intermezzo move like queen c5 attacking so if we did capture the rook with um and making a new queen we would actually be checkmated by queen captures rook we are really also seeing the dangers of back rank checkmates in this game um and the rook just goes to the corner and now rook and now rook e1 and then <laughs> this <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. What? What is this? What is this? What? How? How amazing is that? That is that is one of the most that is one of the most cool patterns I have ever seen in chess. Thank you to uh, Ivan. Is that how you pronounce it? Because it's spelled a little different than usual. Uh, who is a patron of mine who suggested this game that I hadn't seen ever before? Uh, just hanging, we were just hanging out in the Discord, in the ASMR patron Discord, ASMR chess patron Discord, and they just, um, yeah, they just shared this game, and it's just thank you for that. That is an amazing, amazing game. Okay, Queen, pretty desperate actually here. Like probably, probably this is a forced win for Black. Queen c3 and Queen takes rook on d1 like so that's correct right could you play because I know this wins but could you play Queen takes the other rook does that also win Queen takes this rook like that would probably also win right Queen takes rook push the pawn it looks like it's also winning but the queen did capture this rook i'll actually i'll actually turn on the computer here it still wins but this is checkmate in 13 the other is checkmate in seven so it what labordane played is best uh, although both wins queen takes rook rook takes queen and the final move of the game, which is pawn pawn to e2. Look at this. Look at this. So you have white has a queen and a rook and a passed pawn push and all of that. And like this bishop is not doing anything it's just defending against this pawn this rook is not doing anything it's just defending the king these pawns like this is just a small little castle this pawn is basically meaningless so so white is winning this game with these three or black rather is winning this game with these three pawns there's just nothing you can do against them because like you like you like everybody these pawns if they apply themselves and they believe in themselves and they have somebody believe in them as well and they go all the way they can become whatever they want in this case probably they want to become queens um and you just they they support each other and that's also like one of the key factors like it's not enough to apply yourself you have to you have to have support from from your peers and they really do support support each other and 
any pawn move here is uh, is winning. And if if we capture like this, we just checkmate. If we capture like this, what is the checkmate here? It is not capturing the rook because then queen captures rook and we are actually losing. No, the checkmate here is we queen with this pawn or we make a rook if we if we prefer that. That's check only one move, rook takes and then we make this time probably a queen just for the sake of variance, for the sake of diversity, uh, uh, for having different experiences. And yeah, that's that's the game. I hope I hope that you liked it. I hope that you had a good relaxing time. And I hope that I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.